Hey guys, Zane from the Infinite Jukebox here with another album review, and today I wanted to talk about the new Sprain record, The Lamb as Effigy. If you've been a Sprain fan for an extended period of time, then you probably have understood by now that Sprain are no longer a well-kept secret. I mean, sure, they aren't mainstream, but at the same time, there's no denying that The Lamb as Effigy is one of the big archetypal music geek albums of the year so far. And by that, I mean an album that gets a lot of critical praise within underground publications, becomes a major hit in niche corners of the music geek world with websites like Rate Your Music and Album of the Year praising it up and down as the best thing ever, and there are plenty of albums that come out every year that are just like that in the exact same position. And hey, sometimes records like that are great, and other times they are ridiculously overhyped. They can become noodling and self-indulgent, pretentious even, and that's not even a word I like to throw around a lot to describe art in any capacity. My point is that just because something gets a high amount of praise from the alternative crowd doesn't inherently mean that it's good. And I will be totally honest, The Lamb as Effigy, upon first glance for a lot of people, probably won't be the most appealing thing in the world. The big reason for that, to really simplify it at least, is that Sprain make the listener ask one so, so basic yet complex of a question, which is, what is this? It's as simple as that. And this is despite being relatively comparable to a variety of different artistic sources, ranging from classic no-wave bands like Swans to modern avant-garde metal and rock bands like Ashenspire. And you know what, if you want a concrete answer from Sprain regarding what the hell this album is, you're not going to get it here, and you will never get it, most likely, at least. But at the same time, that confusion, that disorienting feel, that looming tone of not being able to understand a single thing that's happening, but still being able to just indulge yourself in it and get lost in the complexity of complete nonsense that is this record, it's kind of the beauty of it. And trust me, when I say nonsense, I, I mean that in a good way. I mean, first and foremost, The Lamb as Effigy is just an assault on the senses through and through. I mean, the harsh noise effects on tracks like Privilege of Being, the intentionally draining drone tracks here and there like God or whatever you call it and Margin for Error, the incredibly dissonant and depraved yet energetic vocal work of Alex Kent, it all just makes for a listening experience that's absolutely shocking. You could have heard the most experimental music of the year so far, and I still think that it would be difficult to stomach this record upon first listen. I think that this record will especially be inaccessible to people not really familiarized with heavily experimental music in general. I can totally see an unprepared listener going into this album and then an hour and 35 minutes later coming back out of it not really knowing what just occurred. And that's because this record is uncaring, it is unloving, it even hates you. It is sort of like boiling blood being poured over a slab of concrete that sprain are about to smash over your skull. It is such a hateful yet poetic album at the same time. As far as I'm concerned, Sprain almost feel like they're trying to create something here that's terrifying yet intriguing, and if that's within the realm of correctness, then they certainly have succeeded here. I mean, the entirety of this album is just filled with song after song of absolute insanity. On one hand, you have these skeletal and minimalistic tracks that are unnerving in their simplicity, just downright haunting and almost spectral. Meanwhile, you have these horrifyingly massive noise-based cuts that are so violent and unhinged and unpredictable that you have absolutely no idea what's going to happen next. The band are just relentless, and these constant attempts to really just shock the listener with these grotesque sounds while still creating something of major artistic substance is so consistently successful, and it makes them stand out like this beautiful, pus-oozing sore thumb, especially within the general noise rock crowd right now. I mean, there is a lot of great noise-adjacent music coming out right now, but... I wouldn't say that there's anything quite as distinct as this that I've heard in recent memory. The point that I'm trying to make is that The Lamb as Effigy is not chaos for chaos's sake. 
but at the same time it is absolute chaos it is a frightening record it is something that is so downright confrontational yet at the same time so distant from the listener it's an oxymoronic album that shouldn't work in all of its idiosyncrasies yet at the same time it just all comes together to create something striking to say the least the utter chaos that's found throughout the Lamb as Effigy is no excuse to dismiss the actual instrumental abilities of the band itself either, however. In fact, I would argue that this is one of the most impressively performed albums that we've seen from music as a whole this year so far. In the more noise-based moments here, there's almost a sort of avant-garde jazz approach to how things are performed. I mean, there aren't really any jazz influences here per se, but the actual approach to performance and the approach to improvisation bears a striking resemblance as Sprain really feel out the room sonically and in terms of audio and begin to sort of synchronize into these massive walls of sound where they each have their own individual paths as musicians, yet at the same time just come together to create something that feels so powerful and so distinct and so apocalyptic. It all just makes sense even though it shouldn't. On the other hand, there are these more somber passages found throughout tracks like the commercial nude that are minimal and somewhat bare bones, yet at the same time they have this very notable quality of just being downright frightening, terrifying, again, whatever you really want to call it, they have this sort of classical approach to them that almost feels like a more stripped back take on a Glenn Branca-esque form of totalism, and I really do enjoy that. I enjoy the mixture of heavily noise-based, freeform music being mixed with a lot of classical tendencies. It's a style that definitely does harken back to classic no-wave sounds of the 80s and 90s, but at the same time, that's not a bad thing. I really do feel like Sprain have their own wildly unique take on things. And it is within these different settings in terms of performance, composition, and tone where Sprain are really able to demonstrate how they can turn dissonance into musical excellency. The drums are colossal, the guitars are claustrophobic in their sort of omnipresence, and the moments where they are absent feel suspenseful and, again, a bit more on the frightening side of things overall, I have to say. And there's also the bass work, which is just so devastating as it adds this destructive reverb to the entirety of the Lamb as Effigy. And that's not to mention the piano work either, which has this sort of chilling tone, both in the high and low energy moments of the record, that really does give it this sort of atmosphere of something not being right. Everything set aside in terms of artistic direction, this record is put together incredibly professionally from a performance standpoint, and I mean that in the best way possible. It doesn't feel overly raw, but at the same time, it's certainly not overproduced. In fact, the production here is actually pretty phenomenal. It feels very live in the studio, not necessarily a live performance, it doesn't really have any sort of hollowness in terms of sound quality, but at the same time, the soundscapes here do feel like you are way physically closer to the band than you probably should be. Overall, I really do have to say that once you get past a lot of the artistic crypticness of everything being presented here, one of the best, most impressive, and most shockingly technical albums in terms of just performance work alone is found on The Lamb as Effigy. At least of this year, not of all time, but maybe. The Lamb as Effigy almost feels like you took a group of chamber musicians and some guitarists and just shoved them into a room with no lights and just cold stone walls together and deprive them of food and water for multiple days and then eventually went up to them and said they had to create some sort of powerful artistic statement or be shot in the back of the head. I feel like that's what this album feels like it's the result of, the world's best slash worst Saul trap of all time. It's just something that feels so desperate to cling to existence. It feels like it's about to fall apart and at the same time there's so much professionalism going on in terms of how each member of the collective can play off of each other and how they can all progress in a similar direction while standing out on their own way. It just really is something that I was expecting to be impressed with from the start considering their history as a technically impressive band and I walked away being absolutely blown away by. And hey, those idiosyncrasies are not just in the instrumental qualities of The Lamb as Effigy. In fact, I would argue that the lyrical content here is even more worth study. 
If you found the music here to be discomforting in its lack of normalcy, then the addition of avant-garde songwriting will probably give you a stroke, and you know what, it's a stroke worth having. Setting the tone for the lamb as effigy is the opening lyrics to the album opening track, Man Proposes, God Disposes, which are, it's about control or lack thereof, a twist of fate, a change, a reversal, the ox turned butcher, the slave turned master, the band turned audience. What? It's all just drenched in this sort of unsteadiness and this uncertainty, but at the same time it all kind of makes sense in this odd sort of stream of conscience kind of way. I mean, it's reminiscent of a lot of classic surrealist poets like Tristan Zara, but at the same time it also comes across like the ramblings of a particularly deranged serial killer. And all of it kind of makes sense for the sake of the record in particular. I mean, even separated from the album, the songwriting here is excellent. But Spray and really do utilize the very odd left field lyrical style here to pair beautifully with their own form of artistic expression, which is already dissonant in its own way. So dissonant lyrics works as well. There's times where the songwriting here almost feels downright depraved, like you shouldn't be hearing it. It almost feels like you're breaking into someone who has not been doing well and really just understanding their mind more than you should be. It's a lot of lyrics that just are not comfortable to experience, but at the same time, that's the best quality about it. I mean, there is genuinely a lot of stuff here that it almost feels like you're violating someone's privacy by having heard it. These thoughts that should not be made public or that they were never intended to be public and obviously you shouldn't feel bad for listening to this album or anything like that but there's just so much going on here that is downright haunting i mean the the joke goes over my head but i am still laughing at it line from we think so ill of you it just manages to be so striking when paired with these crazy avant-garde instrumentals and the downright insanity of the lyric itself. It just all manages to work, but at the same time, it is so haunting that you might be uncomfortable with experiencing it more than a couple of times. In the end, I would even say that that's part of the intent of the record, to make the listener uncomfortable, to make you consider what you want in music or what you really consider to be music that appeals to you, you know? Even as a major noise rock fan, this isn't your average Daydream Nation kind of noise rock. This is even beyond Butthole Surfer's Locust Abortion Technician kind of noise rock. This is humorless. This is entirely insane. It is unhinged. I can't really think of any more synonyms to really get my point across. What I'm saying is just listen to it. I digress, back to We Think So Ill of You, there is a line within that song, well actually a full verse, that regards being on some obscene talk show and it produces a similar effect. A person who is sort of revealing themselves and they probably shouldn't be revealing themselves or at least it doesn't seem like it's supposed to be intentional, again like you're sort of stealing their thoughts, it's unnerving and it's haunting and I love it. The record may ultimately end with the repetition of the phrase, I can't sing when you're looking at me, but it is damn difficult to look away when you have lyrical qualities like this. The Lamb as Effigy is overly long, it's obnoxious, it's artistically crass, and it almost doesn't want you to listen to it more than a handful of times, and that's why I absolutely love it. Spring have utilized this record as a means to really get a rise out of their audience while still producing something great from an artistic and instrumental standpoint. I mean, it's just the right amount of exhausting. A lot of the moments here are so dissonant that they kind of wrap back around to making complete sense in the context of a full record. The band and their instruments are just crashing down all around the listener at the perfect rate that they possibly could be. And more than anything, their refusal to conform to any sense of normalcy is admirable and disturbing at the same time. <laughs> it, I just don't know what to say. Calling The Lamb as Effigy a terrible album makes sense to me in the same way that calling Captain Beefheart's Trout Mask Replica or Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention's Uncle Meat terrible albums because nothing makes sense upon first glance and in the end it's about creative ambition being mixed with the antagonization of the audience. 
or at the very least that's what I personally take away from it I'm not a member of the band and I probably won't be in the future who knows but generally speaking I personally feel like this is a major example of a band managing to do something so deeply cryptic and deeply personal that it's kind of impenetrable and in turn it's kind of difficult for me to talk about it without simply talking about how incredibly difficult or even impossible to decipher it is. Even if you are very experienced within the realm of experimental rock music, you probably or at least might not be prepared for the lamb as effigy and that gives sprain the opportunity to beat the absolute piss out of the listener with no remorse whatsoever and you know what as far as albums that have come out in recent memory go there is no record that i would rather have jumped me in a dark alleyway i'm going to give this record four and a half stars out of five and with that being said that is the end of this album review i've been zane from the infinite jukebox thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one